Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel all about Steph One with me Steph. Now that was a bit of a change in pace from last week. I'm really happy that we had the changes in tyre strategy. It really made the race very unpredictable and I for one really enjoyed it. Where better to have our 70th anniversary GP than at Silverstone, the very track where it all began in 1950. Over the years, Silverstone has definitely produced some incredible races and today I don't think it disappointed. After the dull race we had last week, it was really a question of whether the teams and the drivers would be able to produce a more exciting race this week. I know we had the softer tyre compounds, which I will get to my opinion on later in the video, but I think in general it was actually a really good race. Not quite my favourite of 2020 so far, but it was still very much up there. Okay, so we will start with qualifying as usual and starting with Q1. Usual suspects again, I feel like that's something I'm going to be saying in all of my videos, but yes, the usual suspects. So we had the two alphas, we had Latifi, we had Magnussen, and a little bit of a surprise, we had Danny Kvyat. He has been out in Q1 a couple of times this season, but the Alpha Tower was actually looking decent. Gasly managed to put it in the points very well last week, so I was actually expecting Kvyat to do a little bit better, but alas, he was out. Moving on to Q2, we had Russell, Ocon, Grosjean Sainz and Vettel. Now, Ocon actually qualified in 11th, but suffered a three-place grid drop as a result of impeding one of Russell's laps in Q1, I believe. Again, George Russell getting the most out of that car, making it to Q2 for the fourth race in a row. So he's absolutely smashing it and that was a really incredible performance. Signs, I think he tried to qualify on either the hards or the medium. A little bit disappointing, but I do admire what McLaren were trying to do in giving him a better advantage at the beginning of the race. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off, but I do admire the gamble that they took. Again, we had Sebastian Vettel out in Q2. I really don't think he likes that car. It's He's not working well. He's not able to get the most out of it. And all he had to show for his qualifying efforts was 12th on the grid. Now, he did qualify 12th, but was promoted to 11th as a result of Ocon's penalty. But still, he's definitely not enjoying that car, definitely not getting the most out of it. And Leclerc is definitely the one that's having more success with the SF1000. Moving on to Q3. This was a really interesting session for me because I genuinely believed that anyone could have ended up anywhere. We knew it was going to be a Merck on pole because they are just so fast and I honestly didn't believe that anyone was going to beat them to pole. So it was really a battle between the two of them to see who was going to put it on pole. However, with the rest of the field, I genuinely thought that anyone could have ended up anywhere and it was a really good session. I really enjoyed it. So in the end, it was Bottas that beat Hamilton to pole. It was a little bit disappointing because last week we saw both of them smashing lap records and this week they were kind of nowhere near. So the lap record was in the 124s and we didn't see any 124s this week. So yeah, I definitely thought that the pole lap was going to be a lot faster than it was, especially since they were setting the times on the medium tyre this week, which is the C3 compound, which was the soft last week. So it was the same tyre compound that they were using, but they were unable to get any quicker. An absolute star performance from Nico Hulkenberg to put it in third. Absolutely incredible, and he's really stepped up his game this week in comparison to Stroll. We know Stroll isn't a great qualifier, but Nico Hulkenberg definitely embarrassed him a little bit, especially because Stroll qualified all the way down in sixth. Verstappen in fourth. Now, that was a really spicy second row to have on the grid, and I was really looking forward to how that would play out in the race. Ricardo in fifth. He'd been looking quick all weekend and I think he was like third in free practice two I want to say and whatever changes to the setup or whatever they'd done from last week to this week had clearly paid off because they were looking quick last week but they were looking even quicker this week. Stroll like I said in sixth place much further behind Nico Hulkenberg. Gasly we had in seventh now that was an incredible qualifying from him in the Alpha Tauri. I definitely think he is outperforming that car. We know that Gasly likes the Silverstone circuit and it was really, really great to see, especially off track. He just looks so much happier in the Alpha Tauri and 
he's producing the results on track so he's doing a great job at the minute Leclerc in eighth I thought he could have been a little bit higher but he's still outperforming the Ferrari he's outperforming his teammate in Seb I wish we had more understanding of what the Ferrari situation is but the best he could do was eighth this week in ninth we had Alex Albon getting better with his qualifying but not quite there yet and finally we had Lando who was further up than his teammate but still not as high up as I expected the McLarens to be so it might be that they're actually not that competitive around this circuit and I think the race last week and this week kind of proved that they're not the fastest midfield car around Silverstone. I have shifted to the left this week to try and avoid the sun in my face but I think it's still gonna get me. So in terms of race result, it was actually really jumbled up from what we had in quali. The top 10 looked drastically different. There were a few familiar faces in there, but also some that came from outside of the top 10 in quali. And I actually really enjoyed the unpredictability and the figure it, trying to figure out who was where and what was going on. It was really, really difficult to keep up during the race, but this is what our top 10 ended up looking like. So we had Verstappen in P1. It was an incredible drive from him. I was not expecting the Red Bull to win because on pace alone, they are nowhere near the Mercs. I keep saying the Mercs. I'm really glad that we had such differing tyre strategies this week because I think that that's what put max in contention for the win and i think in the future it will be the only thing that will help him get the win over the mercedes because i don't think at any of the upcoming tracks the red bull are going to be the fastest car i've said it before and i'll say it again the only way that red bull are going to win a race is from differing tire strategies and from doing something different trying to catch the mercedes cars off guard and put a bit of pressure on them. We had Hamilton in P2. Now, Bottas was actually in P2 for the majority of the race. He obviously started from pole, but towards the end, Hamilton was on fresher tyres and was able to overtake him for second place. Bottas, I don't think it was his best race. He did a really great job of defending at the beginning, but I think he could have done a better job of attacking Max. I know the Mercs were suffering with overheating issues and suffering very much with tyre degradation and blistering but I think when they both came out of the pits on the hard tyres I think Bottas should have gone and attacked Verstappen a little bit harder. Leclerc in fourth outperforming the hell out of that Ferrari. He went on a very very long stint at the end I think he changed his tyres on lap 18 I want to say and so those tyres went all the way to the end of the race. Now that was a really brave and uh, risky strategy for the Ferraris to do because we saw what happened with the long tyre stints last week. But yeah, props to Leclerc because he's doing a really good job with that car. Alexander Albon, fifth place. Now he actually did a really great drive. I think he was the first to pit at the beginning. So he spent a good chunk of time making his way through the pack for the entirety of the race. So he was doing great moves, top overtakes, and his performance was genuinely exceptional for me. I think he did a great job. Ideally, his qualifying would be a little bit better, so he wouldn't have to make his way through so many midfield cars, and he would be a little bit closer to Verstappen, and I think that could have put him in contention for at least a podium, but unfortunately, because he was so far away in qualifying, he did not have that opportunity, and he was fighting with the midfield for the majority of the race. Lance Stroll 6th and Hulk in 7th. So these are the two Racing Point boys. Lance Stroll definitely did a better job this week than he did last week. Maybe it's the whole having a benchmark. So Hulk was in front of him for the majority of the race, which was absolutely great to see. He was running in 5th, I want to say, until vibrations towards the end of the race forced him to pit again about 7 laps from the finish. So he went on to the soft tyres, but... He was the only person to go on softs for the entire race. I just don't think it was a very competitive race tyre. Nobody seemed to particularly like it during practice and so it was heavily avoided during the race. Nobody started on softs at all. But yeah, I think that was really disappointing for Hulk because he would have been on for a fifth place finish if he didn't have to pit. I'm not sure that Alex Albon would have been able to get past him at the end, but 
yeah, disappointing. But still a really solid performance from both of the Racing Point cars. Eighth, Esteban Ocon. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't see anything about Esteban Ocon throughout the race. I only saw him briefly during a battle that they were showing with Ricardo when Ricardo had his spin in Sector 2 somewhere. That's when I, that's the only time that I remember seeing Ocon. <laughs> But yeah, it must have been a strong enough drive for him to make his way through the midfield and actually end up in 8th because the midfield was looking really competitive. Norris in ninth did a really good job making his way through the pack after his pit stops. Definitely did a lot better than Signs again and I really, really think that he is showing Signs up a little bit this year. I know they were on different tyre strategies but Norris has really come into his own and I don't think Signs is showing that he can keep up with him. That's a topic for another video so stay tuned for that. And finally we had Kvyat in 10th. Now I'm really glad that he managed to get a point because last week he was obviously really unfortunate to have DNF'd. Again, we didn't see very much of him, but a strong end to his race. So great job, Danny. In 11th, we had his teammate. We had Pierre Gasly. Now, I thought Pierre Gasly was going to be on track for a points finish. And I'm so disappointed that he was unable to do so. I think he lost his points finish when he was fighting with Alex Albon. And we all saw that he had a horrible blister on his rear left. I think it was. So yeah, horrible blister and he ended up having to pit a lot earlier than I think he expected and he only finished a second or two off of Danny Kvyat so I think a few laps and Gasly would have definitely been able to take him. 12th place, Sebastian Vettel again out of the points. Vettel's race did not start off very pretty. We had a spin on turn one. I think he just got a whiff of understeer and ended up spinning round, fell right back to the back of the pack. I think by lap 17 or so, he had made his way back up to 11th place where he started. And from then on, it was just about fighting with the rest of them to see if he could get himself back into the points. Unfortunately, that was clearly not the case and he finished in 12th. It's just really disappointing to see Seb so far down the order. So I need to see um, this relationship improve. Otherwise, this season is going to be a very, very sad one for Ferrari and Seb. Then we have Signs. Again, he's being outperformed by Lando Norris, his younger, faster teammate at the minute. Signs is a really good driver, but I don't know what's going on with him in 2020. The results from Carlos are a little bit disappointing, especially considering that Ferrari have chosen him to be in their car for 2021. I was expecting much more from Carlos Sainz and I'm really disappointed with what I'm seeing at the minute. Ricardo 14th, this was the most heartbreaking part of my weekend, I think, because he was doing so well in free practice, in quali, I really, really thought he'd be up there fighting with Nico Hülkenberg and Max Verstappen, but I think his slight mistake from the middle of the race, somewhere around lap 30, where he span after being really, really close with signs, he span out of ninth place, I want to say it was, eighth or ninth, and... I don't think he was able to recover it from there, which was really, really disappointing because I personally think Ricardo could have had an amazing weekend again. Then we have Raikkonen. Now, I think he did a much better job this weekend than last weekend. He did a really long stint on the mediums and managed to make those last for a long time. He beat his teammate this week in Giovinazzi. So yeah, a positive weekend for Raikkonen, even though there were no points scored and he wasn't competitive enough to be fighting with the rest of the midfield. Grosjean next. Unfortunately, he was not able to progress from his Q2 quali and he was kind of stuck in the back half of the grid. Giovinazzi, again, not doing particularly well. I personally would not want him back in that car. I don't think he's making tons of improvements and I don't think he's doing all that great. I know that the Alpha car is not particularly strong, particularly fast or particularly competitive, but I don't think that Gio is getting the most out of it that he could be. Both of the Williams at the back again, needing to work on their race pace. I think George has definitely shown us that his quali pace and the quali pace of the Williams can be really good and really strong. 
but in the race they just seem to just fall back down the order it's really really heartbreaking to see because when George has qualified so well so when he qualified in 12th in Syria he just kind of fell down the order because the Williams just isn't very good over the race distance And finally, we had our one DNF, which was Kevin Magnussen on lap 46, 47 of the race. So very, very late on. I'm still not entirely sure why he retired, but we saw him. He managed to make it to the pit. So we had no on-track safety car period. We had no virtual safety car period. So yeah, a little uneventful on that side of things. In general, for me, this was a much better race than last week. I just really, really like when teams take a gamble, when all the teams aren't playing the same strategy game. I do believe that Lewis took the fastest lap in the end. So he ended up taking home 19 points instead of just the 18 for second place. He is still ahead in the championship by 30 points, only this week it's not by 30 points ahead of his teammate, it's 30 points ahead of Max Verstappen. So Max Verstappen is now second in the championship, which is really great to see because now it's not just Lewis Hamilton versus Valtteri Bottas. Now there's another guy in the mix, which I really like to see. Heading to Barcelona, I think it's going to be hot again, which might mean that the Mercs struggle and Red Bull will have another opportunity to capitalize on those struggles okay so with regards to my driver of the day i am going to go with max verstappen i know he was a fan driver of the day but for me he did a flawless race the only person that i believe is going to be able to unsurp the mercedes and put any sort of pressure on them will be max verstappen i think he did just that today he did everything right and for my team of the day I'm going with Red Bull. They made great calls for both of their drivers. Their strategy basically started from Saturday when they decided what what tyres they wanted to start the race on. And that was the correct strategy for me. I think it was the only strategy that was going to win them the race. And so that's why for me, Red Bull are the team of the day. Okay, so that will be everything from me this week. Please, if you enjoyed this video, leave me a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know who your driver of the day and your team of the day is. And I will see you guys with another video next week. Hasta luego.